ಗುರುರೇವ ಗತಿ ಗುರುಮೇವ ಭಜೆ ಗುರುಣೈವ ಸಹ ಅಸ್ಮಿನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮಂ ಶಿಶುರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋರ್ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೌ ಮಮ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ರಾಮ್ 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 ಸೊ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ರತ್ನಾನಿ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಲೆಸನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫಿನಿಶ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸೂಕ್ತಿ ರತ್ನಾನಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅಭಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಶಾಕುಂತಲಂ second one taken from uh, Vas- swapna vasavadattam and the third one taken from mudra rakshasam so we will now go into the next few um, sukti ratnani so um, anyone knows where the fourth sukti ratnani is from okay so the fourth sukti ratnani is taken from panchatantra so panchatantra we have already discussed a lot about it so we had uh, one lesson panchatantra katha mukham which gave you the overview of how panchatantra came into existence and you had chitra griva katha which again gave you one of the stories from one of these five tantras so this exact shloka is also one of the um shlokas taken from panchatantra katha panchatantra itself so probably we won't have to discuss a lot um what do we know about panchatantra sir about animals and very good very good so gives you some um, uh, stories about uh, with you know using animals very good next moral stories very good moral stories who is the author of uh, panchatantra vishnu sharma vishnu sharma very good so as we know so the thing is um, since we had a lesson completely dedicated to the creation of panchatantra so there is not much to tell about the author or you know the work as it is so the thing is again we are not sure of how uh, when vishnu sharma lived or what was his duration were there any other works so again there is only uh, the basic you know information that we already have discussed so vishnu sharma was the person who authored panchatantra the exact duration or the time in which this kavi lived we are not sure there have been a lot of um, um, you know facts that have been presented by researchers and uh, though there is not a very pinpoint uh, you know location in history where we can tell vishnu sharma lived there is a very large range we tell that vishnu sharma lived either you know, he surely lived after 1200 bc and surely before 300 ad so it's a very large range that historians have given us but we have no other confirmation or any other proof to uh, further you know shorten this range so he lived somewhere after 1200 bc and somewhere before 300 ad so that is the only facts we have again are there any other works of vishnu sharma we are not sure so the only well known well renowned work of vishnu sharma is nothing but panchatantra and uh, as a small fact uh, vishnu sharma we had panchatantra katha mukham and when i was actually reading the mula grantha the actual panchatantra written by vishnu sharma the first part the first story itself is actually panchatantra katha mukham the exact story we had in panchatantra katha mukham that exact story is the starting point of panchatantra so probably vishnu sharma i know as we saw in you know so, uh, mudra rakshasam so vishakha datta had mentioned initially the names of his father and his grandfather uh, to dedicate it to them so that is one means by which we came to know that uh, an approximate time where vishakha datta lived and probably even vishnu sharma wanted people to know why he wanted to write panchatantra or why he composed panchatantra so he has included the same panchatantra katha mukham the story that is that we have read the exact story is included as the first story of panchatantra probably to give us an idea of how such an innovative idea came into picture because surely if you want to use moral story we could have used human beings but to make sure that people understand that it should be you know panchatantra is meant for kids so he has given this introductory story about how he came about these rajaputras of amara uh, amara shakti and how he you know in order to make them knowledgeable created panchatantra so the exact panchatantra katha mukham story is the first part of or the beginning part of panchatantra that is one you know interesting thing that i actually i thought it is actually a loka katha so i thought it is a fictional story but you know surprisingly it is actually one of the first it's the beginning of panchatantra itself so that is uh, one thing i came across and again um we are we have already discussed that panchatantra has five tantras so can anyone name those five tantras so as we have discussed in uh, panchatantra katha mukham itself it is mitra bheda mitra samprapti kakolukiya labdha pranasha and aparikshita karaka so these are the five tantras 
that are involved in the pancha tantra to make it pancha tantra the five sutras or the five rules and uh, surprisingly one more thing that i came across is you have subhashitani in your you know tritiya book one of the subhashitas is actually taken from um pancha tantra itself so paulasya kathamanya dar harane dosham na vignatavan so that shloka that subhashita is actually taken from uh, pancha tantra again there are a lot more so as i was going through this you know pancha tantra book i came across a lot of you know subhashitas famous lokoktis that you have already read either in prathama dvitiya or any other place you would have heard most of them come actually from pancha tantra for example as as i told you paulasya kathamanya dar harane that subhashita comes from pancha tantra and again you could have you would have already heard about this arambha gurvi kshayini kramena lagvi pura vriddhimachi vriddhimati cha paschat dinasya purvartha parardha bhinna chaye va maitri khalu sajjanana so this shloka again it's a very beautiful uh, imagination by the kavi which tells that uh, the he compares the the you know the group or the people who support a good person and a bad person to the way our shadow changes during the day so as you know the shadow initially in the morning it is very long but as it comes to the noon your shadow becomes very small and again once noon passes and it's evening so from noon to evening your shadow again grows so that is what is the um, idea that is taken up by the subhashita kara to tell that for a bad person he can get a lot of people by tricking them so he can you know get the support of a large number of people initially by you know making some false giving some false hopes or giving them some lies so initially he has a large number of followers but as they come to know about his methods his you know ideology and the way he acts similar to how the uh, shadow reduces along the day till noon he'll also start losing the people he has but a sajjana he initially may not be able to capture a lot of people because it's not easy to identify good aspects in a person so probably a very few people will be supporting him but once they realize his greatness once they realize his good qualities they start you know joining with him and similar to how a shadow increases from noon to evening even the number of people supporting him following him they it will also start increasing so very famous subhashita also from um, panchatantra again swadeshe pujyate raja vidwan sarvatra pujyate this is also a very beautiful lokokti which also comes from panchatantra now coming to this particular um, sukti that we have udyoginam purusha simham upaiti lakshmihi so when i was going through the source like i was identifying the source of this it actually took me quite some time because there were two different you know um, variations that i was finding so the first aspect was it was told to be taken from panchatantra and the second set of ideas that i came across told that it is taken from chanakya niti but uh, i felt that since panchatantra surely has come before chanakya niti it is probably uh, the means that chanakya has you know understood the greatness of this particular you know subhashita and he has used it in his chanakya niti and probably the source still remains to be panchatantra but it has been again reused by chanakya in chanakya niti this happens a lot of times so if there is some very beautiful um, statement or a stotra or a shloka or a subhashita in some previous grantha when required that can be taken from that source and utilized by other kavis later on hence considering that to be the fact i would consider panchatantra to be the actual source and chanakya niti to be the reuse of the same shloka so with that we'll come to how this particular uh, shloka has been used as you discussed there are five tantras and this particular shloka that is this particular lokokti comes from mitra sambhrapti which is the second tantra since you know there are i know as i've told you each of these tantras have some number of stories so mitra bheda the first tantra is actually the largest tantra which has a large number of stories somewhere around 22 to 25 stories and after that the remaining four sutras are quite short compared to mitra bheda having around 15 to 20 varying from you know tantra to tantra so this second tantra that is mitra sampratti is where you will come across this shloka which has the lokokti udyoginam purusha simham upaiti lakshmihi now rather than telling you completely all the stories involved in mitra sampratti since this particular you know subhashita comes in a particular story of panchatantra i will tell you the story that this occurs in. so it will be one story that i am choosing 
to tell you in from panchatantra so the story is the name of the story in english if you want to read it will become somilakada weaver or in sanskrit the original name given in panchatantra is somilaka gupta dhana upabhukta dhana katha so why the name is given we will come to know when we go through the story so with that we will start with the grantha we have already discussed its panchatantra but in this we are discussing a particular story which is this somilakada weaver so starting with the story again as we know we you know it always starts with some place so here somelaka is a weaver so a person who makes clothes he weaves clothes so he is a weaver in a particular city the beauty is somelaka is very well known for his weaving skills he has uh, you know he does a very intricate job his designs are very beautiful and you know the thickness so actually the greatness of a weaver is in how thin he can make the cloth because making it thick is very easy you just have to you know tie some you know threads and it will become thick but a weaver is considered to be great if he can make the you uh, know the cloth that he is making as thin as possible and somelaka was able to do that he was able to make very thin cloth a cloth but with very intricate designs so that is his greatness and uh, his um, quality it was so renowned that even kings praised his skills the kings and the you know queens at that point of time they praised the skills of somelaka and weaving but what happened was even though he was so good at his you know work he was so skilled he still did not have enough money so he had just enough money to have uh, you know the basic needs food shelter and clothing so these were the basic things that he could sustain but but he did not have anything excess he did not have any excess wealth to amass and to collect but when he observed the other weavers so in that city there were lot more weavers and you know they were never as good as somilaka they used to make very thick cloth they you never used to sell it to the kings they were always making very simple common clothes but still they were richer than somilaka so even though their skills were not as good as somilaka they were able to not just get food water so food shelter and clothing they were also able to get some extra money which they could collect so somilaka is very sad <clears throat> in spite of being such a good weaver he was not able to get enough money so he is depressed and he tells his wife that it is probably the place that i am staying in it is not good for my business so i feel that only if i go to some neighboring city and you know show my skills i'll probably able to amass a lot of money and you know i'll be able to become a rich person so that is his idea so he tells his wife that i think that i should stop my business here and go to a new city but the wife is thinking against this so she tells that um, i don't think it is a good idea because she tells that um, it is uh, foolishness to think that if you can't make money here you'll make money somewhere else so if someone is giving you this idea then it is surely foolishness and whatever is written in fate whatever is destined to happen that will happen if you are destined to make money and become a rich person you will surely become whether you are here or if you are somewhere else so don't get this idea of going to a new city and you know starting your business and she again makes a very beautiful statement the thing is we have already discussed this shloka in chitra greva katha nahi bhavati yanna bhavyam bhavati cha bhavyam vina api yatnena kara tal gatam api nashyati yasya hi bhavitavyata nasti so again this shloka has already come in chitra greva katha as well but still as you can see if the shloka is very good it is told in different places it's like you know in mahabharata it is told from the right from the beginning it is told do not harm others do not do bad for others so this you know entire rule has been stated at different places in different incidents similarly vishnu sharma understood that this particular subhashita is actually a very important one and he uses every opportunity to use it again and again hence this again this shloka has again been repeated in this particular story as well nahi bhavati yatra yann bhavyam भवति चाव्यम विना करतल गतमीनाशियतीफ्यूटिंग no i don't believe in your uh, thought process only if a person works hard will he be able to get um, good benefits and he tells a very beautiful shloka which probably you would have already heard udyame na hi sidhyati karyani namanorathai hi 
nahi suptasya simhasya pravishanti mukhe mriga so he makes this beautiful shloka and tells that udyame nahi siddhyanti only if you work hard will something be successful siddhyati it will bear fruits what will bear fruits karyani na manorathai so the work that you want to do will only be fulfilled if you put hard work if you put in your hard work or your effort na manorathai if you just think okay i want to make money or i want to you know become educated just by thinking you will never achieve it only if you put in your efforts if you put in your hard work only then will your work that you want to pursue or gain will be fulfilled and he gives a very beautiful example that nahi suptasya simhasya pravishanti mukhe mriga so simha or the lion is the king of the jungle but just because it is the king of the jungle it is not that if it just goes and sleeps in its den the animal itself will come and you know uh, sit in front of him to be eaten the, you know even though being the king the sim uh, the simha or the lion has to put in its effort it has to hunt it has to chase the animal and kill it in order to eat just because it is a king or just because of the padavi or the you know position that it has no one will come and no animal will come and surrender itself to be eaten so this beautiful shloka is told by the uh, weaver somilaka at telling that i don't believe in destiny i believe that only if a person works hard will the fruits of that effort be given and you know even though the wife tries to you know persuade him not to go and finally somilaka decides that okay it is no use being here he decides and he decides to go to a neighboring city called um vardhamana pura so vardhamana pura is the city that he wants to go after this is done so he, you know um, he goes there and for an entire year for one complete year he is alone there so he does not take his wife along with him he goes alone he you know pursues his business and you know he you know works hard and for one complete year he works and at the end of that he gets around he, he is able to earn around 300 gold coins so with 300 gold coins he feels it okay now i've earned some amount of money so now let me go back to my house and you know show my wife that it is hard work that was beneficial so he you know decides and he takes the 300 gold coins that he has earned and he starts coming towards the city but nearly on the on the way when he's reaching it you uh, know the sun sets and it becomes dark and he's in the middle of a forest and that forest is known for wild elephants so these elephants are very notorious and they they're known to kill people so he is aware of this and he thinks that okay it's not a good idea to you know start roaming around in these forests so he decides to rest for that day and then think of you know moving the next day so what he does is he climbs a very tall and a strong tree to protect himself from these uh, himself from this these elephants but when he you know is sleeping there he starts dreaming so he has 300 gold coins with him and he starts dreaming what does he dream he dreams about two people so the the two people who are you know uh, who are in his who have come in his dream are like yamakinkaras they have a very uh, fearful at you know dressing sense they have a very fearful face and they are discussing and the beauty that vishnu sharma uses is he calls one person the god of action and the other person is called the god of destiny so the god of destiny is called kartra and the god of action is called karma so very beaut- beautifully written kartra and karma so these are the two people they are the gods you know in his dream who have come and they are discussing what are they discussing now the person of you know the destiny the god of destiny will ask the god of action so we know action is what you do and destiny is what is fate so this destiny will ask the action that oh you know um, action you know that somilaka is only destined to earn money sufficient for his food clothing and shelter anything above that he should not get that is his fate that is his destiny but why do you make him earn 300 gold coins is what destiny will ask action but action will tell no no you are thinking it wrong as being the god of action i believe that if a person works hard and if he puts in effort then he surely then he should surely be rewarded with the required you know uh, amount of money or re- required amount of rewards so that is actions idea if someone works hard he should be given the reward the action the god of action also adds that if he has got the 300 gold coins but what happens next is not my um, is not under my um, i know um, control it is under your control so what what action has done is he has made sure that since sumilaka has worked hard for one year he has got the reward of 300 gold coins but he is telling that further what will happen to somilaka and the 300 gold coins is left to destiny once this you know dream is going on suddenly somilaka wakes up wakes up from his sleep 
and he sees that the bag that he was carrying the gold coins is empty he is very sad so he has worked hard for one year but still at the end of one year he has suddenly lost all the 300 gold coins that he had so he is thinking if i go back to my wife surely she will see i told you that you should not have gone to another city you will not make any profit so she will again you know try to persuade me that fate is more stronger than hard work so in the end what happens is he'll decide okay instead of doing that let me stay here longer so he wouldn't have told his wife that he'll come back after one year so he'll think okay let me stay here for one more year let me work hard and you know try to get some more money so he'll continue so he'll go back to vardhamanapura he'll again continue working for one more year so one year is already gone he lost his 300 gold coins he wants to work for one more year so this time what happens is he works for one year and luckily since he has already some good customers who have already known his skill he gets a better you know um, money so he gets this time 500 gold coins so instead of 300 gold coins last year he gets 500 gold coins and he is very happy so once he is very happy he is okay after one complete year he feels that okay now i have earned 500 gold coins and this time i thought i should surely go back home and you know uh, stay with my wife because i've earned some good amount the same thing happens he starts going to his uh, house but again the sun sets it's dark he's in the same forest but this time he thinks he decides whatever happens i should not stop and i should not sleep and i should you know continue because if i sleep i will lose 300 gold coins so something is wrong with this forest if i sleep i will lose 300 uh, i lose my money so i should continue going but what happens is he is going in the night he is not worrying about the elephants or you know any other you know problems but as he is going the same two people the god of destiny and the god of action who had come in his um dream they actually start walking in the forest in front of him and they are again discussing the same thing destiny is again asking oh action why did you make so many like get 500 gold coins he should only get money to support his food shelter and clothing he is not destined to get more money so why are you you know give, making him get 500 gold coins again action will tell he has worked hard and as the god of action it is my duty that if a person works hard he should get money so the same conversation happens again so immediately after the conversation both the gods of destiny and the god of action they vanish he looks at his bag again the 500 gold coins have vanished so he is again very sad so he has worked for 2 years without any benefit at least if he was at home he would have you know uh, happily eaten you know the food made by his wife he could have you know you know easily had a simple life he came here with so much of difficulties but still at the end of 2 years he lost 800 gold coins now he feels that it is um, no longer um, enough so he does not have the courage because at least if he had some money he could have gone back now he is not ready to face his wife i know and you know he has already borne a lot of pain and efforts so he decides okay i don't think i can you know continue living like this he decides to commit suicide so he decides to end his life and he you know makes a rope out of some grass he you know hangs it around a tree and is ready to you know put the noose around his neck and hang himself when a god actually appears before him and tells so melaka stop don't do this you should not be you know killing yourself um i i understand that you've gone through a lot of uh, efforts and you still have lost 800 gold coins so but i'm very happy with your hard work so ask me any boon and i will give it to you now so melaka is very happy because though he has lost you know some amount of money you now the, the god is give, ready to give any boon that he wishes so he first thing he tells is give me more money now the god actually will tells a very beautiful uh, you no know, shloka which tells that what is the use of that money which you can't even spend so the god tells that see you have enough money to happily lead a life what do you need you need food you need shelter to stay and you need good clothing you have enough money to fulfill all these three basic needs but still what will you do with this extra money what where will you use it but the somela card makes a another beautiful statement telling that i don't care what i will do or what i will not do i don't even care if i can use the money or not all i wish is i should become a wealthy person because i have heard that only a wealthy person is respected in society irrespective of whether he uses his money or not so now the god understands that there is no way to change somelaka's mind so he tell okay so we'll make a deal i have i know promised to give you some you know fulfill your wish so you have made a wish but before i fulfill your wish i want you to do something so somelaka asks so okay what do you want me to do so he tells go back to your village there there are two wealthy people one wealthy people one wealthy person is called gupta dhana gupta dhana and the second wealthy person is called upabhukta dhana 
So the beauty is there in the name itself, but I will disclose the meaning again if you have not realized it once I finish this story. So I'll tell, go back to your city. There are two wealthy people. One is Gupta Dhana and another one is Upabhukta Dhana. What, they have, what you have to do is go to each person for one day. So stay with them for the stay within that house, in that person's house for one complete day and come back. And now after you have you know, visited both these places, come back and tell me which one do you want? Gupta Dhana or Upabhukta Dhana? So you know, the you know, um, weaver, Somi Lakafi is, okay, what is that? Just have to go to these two people's house, you know, stay with them for one day and then come and decide what I want. So it'll, okay, that is fine. So after this discussion is done, Sumilaka goes back home. And as instructed by the God, he goes first day, he'll, you know, with a lot of difficulty, he'll find Gupta Dhana. So it is, he finds it very difficult to actually find Gupta Dhana. So finally he finds that Gupta Dhana's house, he somehow, you know, detects it and he goes there. But the problem is, they're not ready to take him in. So they don't want any visitors at all. And you know that person, the owner, the the owner of the house, Gupta Dhana, he's a very miser person and he tells, okay, why did you come? We don't want guests. I don't want to you know, waste my money on guests. Um, it's not you know, something good. But you know, somehow, you know, uh, Somilaka persuades him and he goes into the house and no one is ready to you know, uh, welcome him. So everyone is you know, cursing him. Why did a guest come to our house? We are wasting money. And in you, even if they, when they're serving food, they're you know, thinking, okay, should we serve him food? Because they are so miserly that they don't want to, to even expend some extra money to serve food to a guest. So they're thinking, um, what, what should we do? So, okay, they try to you know, you know, put a little bit of food, but then Suomilaka tells, please put some more, put some more. And they're forced to you know, put a little more food. So finally, after the food has ended, they don't even give him a good place to sleep and he's made to sleep outside in the veranda. When he sleeps, the same two people, the God of destiny and the God of action, again, they come into the uh, you know, dream of Somilaka. Again, now the destiny asks, uh, so, and the, the destiny asks um, action. Okay, action, now you tell me, this Gupta Dhana is not meant to feed one extra person. So actually, they know this Gupta Dhana, so this um, God of action and God of destiny are very beautiful creations of Vishnu Sharma, which are trying to indicate the behaviors of a person. So the action, the God of destiny is telling that, see, we have, you know, according to the rules, Gupta Dhana should only be feeding himself and his family. There is, there was no mention that he can feed one more person. So what has to be done? Then, you know, this uh, action will, the God of action will tell, see, I can't help. A guest had come. So my intention was if a guest has come, he should be fed. I did that. What happens next is again left to you. So what happens next is, since they had to spend one person's food on Somilaka, next day, the owner, Gupta Dhana, he's, you know, ridden with disease and is unable to eat food. So one time of food that was given to Somilaka has been compensated. That is how the God of destiny and the God of action work. So if one extra food has been given, someone should lose their food so that the balance is maintained. So that is how God of destiny and God of action work. So now, you know, he has had a very bad experience with uh, Gupta Dhana and he decides, okay, I don't know. I've you know, gone to Gupta Dhana and this was the experience. I don't know what will happen with Upabhukta Dhana. But surprisingly, he finds that it is very easy to find this person Upabhukta Dhana. Everyone knows about him. So finally, he easily find, finds Upabhukta Dhana's house and he goes and what he sees is when he's just going to his house, the you know, owner is we're coming outside, he's welcoming him, he's doing the you know, Pada Puja, he's welcoming this weaver and the family members are very happy. They're happy that a guest has come home and you know, they're all ready to uh, you know, welcome him and serve him. So the entire day, rather than just one time of food that Gupta Dana had given, Upabhukta Dana give him, uh, gives him three times food. So in, from the morning to the noon till the night, he is given food three times and you know, the you know, people in the house serve him in, a, you know, in various ways. And in the night, he's given a very good place to sleep, you know, a very cozy place to sleep. And in the night, again, these two people, the God of destiny and the God of action come. Again, the God of destiny has the same question. See, uh, Upabhukta Dana is only meant to sustain food, shelter, and clothing. He did not have money to serve a guest, but you made Somilaka be served. Now, what has to be done? Again, action tells, see, Somilaka is a guest. He had to be served. I can't do anything. So what happens next day is, because Upabhukta Dana had to spend some money which he did not have, the next day, the soldiers from the king's palace, they come with large amounts of money and they give it to Upabhukta Dana. 
because he had done some good work so in that way the money that he had to spend extra actually what would have happened is in order to serve the guest upabhuktadana would even have borrowed some money so that there is no you know problem in serving the guest so he would have even borrowed money from others so in order to compensate the extra money he spent the money he borrowed it is compensated by some amount of money that is sent by the king to upabhuktadana so what he understands here is gupta dhana as the name itself tells the money that is kept a secret upabhukta dana the money that is utilized upabhukta something that is consumed or utilized so gupta dana is a person who is a miser he only collects money without spending but upabhukta dana whatever he has he spends it according to the correct so at that particular situation what is to be done he only thinks about that he does not think about he should collect money he should amass money he should you know become a rich person so after having seen these two people he understand oh okay so having uh, this is what the god wanted me to see so he wanted me to see that just amassing wealth will not take me anywhere it will actually be a detrimental thing but if i use the money that i have wisely and if i have enough money for food shelter and clothing that is the only best thing that i can get so when the god appears he'll tell so did you go and meet gupta dhana and upabhukta dhana and somalaka tells yes um i saw both of them and i understood your intention of making me meet them so i have decided that i want to be upabhukta dhana and not gupta dhana and we have already seen pipi likajitam dhanyam makshika sanchitam madhu grains that are you know amassed by ants or the honey collected by um, or the nectar connected by the honey bees they finally are destroyed because they are just collected and are, they are not used hence whatever you collect you should use them as quickly as possible before it perishes so that is what is the beautiful you know story of this uh, and that is why the name itself tells somilaka gupta dhana upabhukta dhana katha so the story of somilaka gupta dhana and upabhukta dhana so this is the story wherein this particular shloka comes and where does this shloka come you would have already guessed so this is this occurs when the conversation between um, somilaka and the wife happens so the wife will tell destiny is what decides how much you will earn she will tell that nahi bhavati yatra bhavyam after that when you know somilaka tells that it's not destiny it is hard work and he tells udyam eva hi siddhyanti karyani namanorathaihi nahi suktasya simhasya pravishanti mukhya mrgah after that he continues with the shloka udyoginam purusha simham upaiti lakshmihi daivena deyamiti ka purusha vadanti daivam nihatya kur paurusha matma shaktya yatne krite yadi na siddhyati kotra doshah so that is the complete shloka that involves this particular lokokti or sukti ratna so sukti ratna is the first line of this shloka the shloka meaning goes like this udyoginam purusha simham upaiti lakshmihi udyoginam hard working industrious purusha simham so here the person who is working hard is not just a normal person he is a purusha simha he is the lion like person because he is working hard he is taking risks so the kavi beautifully calls a hard working person not just as a purusha but as a purusha simha the you know lion like person what happens to the lion like you know hard working person lakshmi upaiti the money or wealth approaches him upaiti approaches the hard working person udyage udyoginam purusha simha upaiti lakshmi hi daivena deyam iti ka purusha vadanti some people what do they tell daivena deyam fate should give you money so some people no i think that it is fate or destiny that will give you money but it is only the industrious person or the person who is working hard to that person even though he does not ask for money wealth will go and approach him herself the lakshmi will go and approach the hard working person daivena deyamiti ka purusha vadanti daivam nihatya kuru paurusham atma shaktya so daivam nihatya so kill or destroy fate so don't have the idea that destiny is there fate is there to help you destroy that idea and become hard working put your efforts then yatne krite yadi na siddhyati kotra doshah so what is telling is so it's not like if you put in effort always you'll be successful so many times you would have put in so much of effort but still you may not be able to get the fruits for example recently uh, isro launched chandrayaan but they had put in so much of effort they had put in so much of money so many people had contributed but still finally the thing is the man chandrayaan did not land very well and it had a crash but subhashita kara is telling that yatne krite yadi na siddhyati kotra doshah if you put in your efforts and still you don't get the um, 
you know, uh, results. Kotra dosha, what is the problem? He's telling that it is not a bad thing because you would have put in effort, you would have learned something and it is not a waste. But if you tell that, you know, if you just keep quiet telling that, okay, destiny will give me food, destiny will give me money, then you have nothing to complain about because you are not sure if you would work hard for it. He's telling, don't have the idea of fate, work hard. Even after working hard and putting effort, if things don't work well, then it is not kotra dosha. There is no problem in that. It is something, you know, if the effort you have put in this time will probably help you next time. So that is the beautiful shloka told by this, you know, uh, the Somilaka, the weaver. And the meaning of the given sukti ratna, that is udyoginam purusha simha mupaiti lakshmi. He, wealth approaches the industrious person. Purusha simha, you don't have a you know, corresponding word in, in English, but you can use uh, wealth or money approaches or you can actually use goddess Lakshmi itself. So goddess Lakshmi or wealth approaches the industrious and hardworking person. Yatnavannu maduvavannu Lakshmiye khuddagi hogi seruttale. Antaha purusha simhanannu seruttale. That is the meaning of this uh, particular sukti ratna. So what I was thinking is since we have, you know, we had a very small uh, discussion because you have, we have already learned Panchatantra, Katha Mukham and Panchatantra. So I'll just, you know, take up one more sukti ratna which is also a very commonly known one and we will complete two sukti ratna. So any doubts in this fourth sukti ratna, Udyoginam Purushasim Humpayati Lakshmi? Okay. And what I would suggest is like, all I have been doing here is I've been trying to encourage you to understand the poet, his works, etc. But from an exam point of view, I've told you the meaning. I've told you the individual word meanings as well. But when you write it, you should actually give good examples. For example, even in this case, Udyoginam Purushasim Humpayati Lakshmi, I've given you this example of Chandrayaan, etc. But you can actually take any story from mythology, any story from Hitopadesha, Panchatantra, etc. And you know, you can actually give examples or gist. So that's why gist is very important. That as I've told you, even from Subhashita itself, gist is what you have taken away as the important point from the Subhashita or the Sukti. So make sure that you, you know, as if you're making notes, write the Subhashita Sukti Ratna, Necessary, you can make a note of the author and the work that you've taken from. That is extra information that I'm giving you. Write the meaning. And after that, write a small gist. Give, explain it a little more in elaborately and give some examples. You have a lot of, you know, examples that you can give here. For example, Chakrara Pankthiri Vagachati Bhagya Pankthi. So you can always give Yudhishthira as the example. Because he was, you know, initially brought to be the king. He was even, you know, given the Padavi of uh, um, uh, Prince. That is... Uh, he was given the, you know, he, is, he was ready to become coronated as a king. But suddenly what happened? The Yuta Krida happened. He was, you know, defeated in that first time. Then he was sent back. Second time he was again called for Yuta Krida. He is still defeated and he was sent back and he was sent for Vanavasa, Agnatavasa. So you can bring Yudhishthira as a very good, you know, example for Chakrara Pankthiri Vagachati Bhagya Pankthi. So like that, try to find examples from mythology, Hitopadesha, Panchatantra, etc. And give some small examples with some explanation in your gist. So please make a note of this point if you're making notes. Okay. Okay. So with that, we'll actually take up one more Sukti Ratna. And that Sukti Ratna is actually um, ninth one. So we have finished one, two, three, four, and we'll jump directly to the ninth one because the introduction to the ninth one is also quite simple. So if probably you would have already, if you know, you'll already know from the, the source of this particular Sukti. So anyone can read, uh, can, you know, tell which, so, you know, source of this ninth one. Sambhavitasya chakirti maranadati richyate. It's a very famous source. So if someone can tell me. It would be very, Gita. very good. Bhagavad Gita. So this particular Sukti is taken from Bhagavad Gita. So can you uh, tell me the uh, chapter that you, if you know, ma'am? Second chapter. Very good. Second chapter. Shloka. Mm, number, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Very good. But uh, being able to guess that it is from second chapter itself is very good. So very well recognized. It is from Bhagavad Gita's second chapter. So since you know, Bhagavad Gita is a very well-known Grantha, so I thought we'll complete this ninth Subhano Sukti Ratnani uh, quickly and we can probably use the remaining time for elaborating on the remaining Suktis. So as we know, what do we know about Bhagavad Gita? It is Krishna Supadesha to uh, Arjuna. Very good. Krishna Supadesha to Arjuna. Very good. What can you tell they about? Generally say, they generally say it is whatever uh, doubt you have about life, or how it is, how it should be, and things like that. You will get every answer. Each and every answer can be obtained from Bhagavad Gita. Very good. Okay. 
How many of you here have written Bhagavad Gita exams? Only two levels. Yeah, okay. Anything. So if you have written Bhagavad Gita exams, it's good. So if you have written, very good. So if you have already written the first exam, at least you'll surely be able to relate to what is happening here. So just a brief, you know, introduction as we all know. So it is Bhagavad Gita. The name itself tells the song, the divine song of the Lord. So, you know, it's one of the few Granthas wherein the Lord himself has given out a Grantha and this is Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord. So as we know, it comes in Mahabharata. So Mahabharata is the main Grantha in which this is a part. So Bhagavad Gita, Gita, Gita is a part of Mahabharata or though it can be considered a separate Grantha, it occurs, this situation occurs in Mahabharata. And again, we know it is in the middle of Kurukshetra battlefield, in the middle of Dharmakshetra, that is a Kurukshetra. And uh, the incident is that Pandavas and Kauravas have decided to finally wage a war in order to decide who will be the king. And uh, at that point of time, the armies have, you know, come and, you know, they have assembled in the Punya Bhumi of Kurukshetra. And as we know, there are 11 Akshavhinis of Sainya on um, Kaurava side and there are 8 Akshavhini Sainya on, Pan sorry, 7 Akshavhini Sainya on Pandava side, totally making it 18. So actually, if you read Mahabharata, the beautiful thing is you have, be, you know, 18, the number 18 has been given a lot of prominence. Mahabharata has 18 Parvas. In that Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters. And in the Yuddha, the total number of Akshavhinis that have the battle, it is 11 from Kaurava side and 7 from Pandava side, again making it 18. So 18 is a very prominent number that you come across in Mahabharata, just as an extra point. So again, so these Akshavhini Sainyas have come and assembled to have the first day of battle. And you know, finally, so we know the hero of um, Mahabharata is Arjuna, Krishna, Pandavas, but still among them, the more for the person who you know shows up his valor and his skills more is Arjuna. So, and we always know in any film or any story, the hero makes the late entry. So everyone is assembled, but except for Arjuna and of course our you know Sutradhari, uh, Kapatanataka Sutradhari, if you can call him as well, Krishna. So they both have you know are yet to come. So the SM, the Sena is assembled, only our hero, the protagonist, Arjuna, has to come. So Arjuna is ready to is, you know, full prepared for war. He's, you know, destined to end the war in one day. So it is told that Arjuna want, is so eager to end the war that he tells it, I'll end the entire war in one day. That's what he would have told. So he's very eager to see what is the army looking like. So he tells um, Krishna, oh Krishna, so please take me to the center field that is exactly in the middle of where the Pandavas and Kauravas are. So in the middle of both of these, these armies, please place the chariot so that I can have a view of how the armies are placed and who are all the people whom I've, I'm destined to fight against. So that is what is the background story of the first chapter. And again, all the 18 chapters have individual names, Arjuna, Vishada Yoga, Sankhya Yoga, Karma Yoga, etc. Mainly based on what is the knowledge being imparted in that particular chapter. So based on that, these chapters have been divided. So in the first uh, chapter, all that, that is happening is, so all of them have uh, assembled and, you know, Arjuna is now at the center of the battlefield and he looks at both the armies. On one side, he has his army made up of Pandavas and supporting kingdoms, king, uh, kings from different kingdoms. And on the opposing side are the people who, have, who he has been living with, who he has been playing around with, who he has been, um, you know, uh, worshipping and respecting be it, you know, his brothers, though he may not have a very good relation with Kauravas, still he had, you know, he still considers to be them to be his brothers. He has his Guru Drona. He has, of course, Arjuna is known to very uh, like Bhishma very much. So he has Bhishma on that side. He has Guru Putra Ashwatthama and so many other people. Having seen this, our Arjuna, who is known, you know, to be a very valorous person, courageous person, he loses all his courage. And he's, that's what is the first, you know, chapter, Arjuna Vishada Yoga. He goes into grief. And, you know, very important shlokas that we come across in the entire Mahabharata, sorry, in Bhagavad Gita are actually present in the second chapter itself. So, very commonly recited or very commonly stated, you know, Bhagavad Gita shlokas are present in the second uh, chapter itself. And again, before going to Bhagavad Gita itself, so uh, we have known that, of course, there is no author as such. So, Krishna himself is the author of this work. Uh, when did he exist? We don't want to know. He's relived sometime in the Dwapara Yuga. So let us let it be like that. And coming to the greatness of Bhagavad Gita, we have a lot of, you know, <clears throat> shlokas giving out the greatness. 
सो भगवद्गीता किंचित गीता गंगा जल लव कणिका पीता सकृद भी ये न मुरारी समर्चा क्रियते ते न यमे न चर्चा सो अगेन भज गोविंदम गिव्स दिस ब्यूटीफुल श्लोका सो अगेन यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल गिविंग यू वेरी गुड श्लोकास डिस्क्राइबिंग द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ भगवद गीता सम पीपल इवन कंसीडर भगवद गीता टू बी द पंचम वेदा of course the debate on panchama veda is drastic so some people consider mahabharata itself to be panchama veda some people consider bhagavad gita to be panchama veda so leaving that topic aside so bhagavad gita is a very prominent scripture in our um, hindu culture come into the first chapter arjuna is in grief and you come across you know a lot of beautiful shlokas for example gandhi evam samsrate hastat so that beautiful shloka wherein arjuna tells that i am so grieved that my hands are shivering my body is you know burning with um, this feeling and my gandiva so arjuna is told to wield the gandiva in a very good way but even that gandiva which he has a very good hold on he tells that it is slipping away from his hand and he again tells nakankshe vijayam krishna so he tells i don't need victory anymore he feels that rather than killing his own kith and kin he feels that it is better to be killed by them because he feels that there is no use in killing his own friend or family and trying to you know be happy by the conquered kingdom so that again beautiful shlokas are told in arjuna vishada yoga so all these um, shlokas after having told arjuna surrenders to krishna and he tells that i don't want to fight so second chapter is actually the starting point where krishna starts to give out the Im- immense knowledge that bhagavad gita is famous for it starts as sankhya yoga which is the second chapter and in sankhya yoga we have amazing shloka so because this is a starting point so now arjuna is very fragile because he is not in he is not the, the strong arjuna that we all know he is in the state where he is very fragile and things can go wrong so the if you see the you know ways bhagavad gita is you know segregated as adhyayas it starts as a very you know generic uh, in, instruction so krishna starts giving very general instructions in the second chapter but as arjuna starts becoming stronger and you know he starts gathering his emotions and he starts becoming a more composed person that is when krishna goes deeper and deeper and deeper into adhyatma and he gives more very small minute details sankhya yoga is like a common instruction a very general instruction that you give to any person so if any person comes with problem all you tell is ah don't worry things will be good see put it on the lord and work so the same thing is what krishna is telling in second chapter he is telling because he knows all now he has to do is just first make sure that arjuna does not become very weak he does not become further weak so krishna's main intention in the first in the second chapter is to make sure that he you know he consoles krishna so that is how you know most of the shlokas that we come across you know in bhagavad gita come in second chapter for example he tells na jayate mriyate va kadachit nayam bhutva bhavita vanabhuya ajo nitya shashvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sharire so he's telling see don't worry that you will die or he will die just think that it is just the body that is dying the soul remains so he's just trying to you know pacify arjuna by telling that see don't feel that you are killing your brothers they are not brothers you know your brothers they are just shariras he is trying to console again he is trying to console vasam sijirnani yatha vihaya navani grunhati naroparani tatha shariradi vihaya jirnani anyani samyati navani dehi so your brothers are just souls they leave this body they'll go into another body don't feel that you are you know killing someone it is just the body that you are destroying he is trying to again console krishna sorry he is trying to console arjuna and again he is telling uh, you know jatasya hidruvo mrityu dhruvam janma mrtasya cha so he is telling that see this life and death is something very common if a person is born surely he will die and if a person dies surely he is born so don't again grieve so the entire sankhya yoga is krishna trying to pacify arjuna trying to calm him down telling that you know control your emotions again he you know he'll tell hato va prapsyase swargam jitva va bhokshase mahi so if you die what will happen see he is telling now don't let go of your dharma so kshatriya dharma is protect the good and destroy the evil that is your dharma all you have to do is don't think he is your brother or this is a wrong battle just do your work again he tells this and you know, a very commonly very famous you know uh, shloka karmanye vadhikaraste maphaleshu kadashana so you just do the work you have control only on the work that you do don't try to think about the fruits leave the fruits to me you do the work so he's trying to just make arjuna understand that he should do his work and he should not think about the results so once 
the second chapter is done that is when arjuna slowly tries you know you know he starts gaining control over his emotions and he thinks calmly and then he asks very good questions as you can see in you know the first chapter it is just arjuna he's just telling i can't fight i'm feeling tired i'm feeling dizzy i'm feeling you know um, unable to hold my god you know he's giving out his problems in the second chapter krishna is pacifying him telling that control your emotions nothing is wrong wait i'll tell you something so the second chapter goes like this only from the third chapter that you will see that arjuna and arjuna's you know verses or the shlokas of arjuna start increasing because he has you know understood okay he has understood okay what krishna is telling is right so let me think and as he starts thinking he has more and more questions which take krishna into more and more deeper concepts which is explained in detail in the corresponding adhyayas so samkhya yoga is actually a very good place to get very common world examples and common world you know suggestions that krishna is giving to every person only if you are interested in going to the depths you can continue on to the next adhyayas and gain more intricate knowledge now uh this particular sukti that is sambhavitasya chakirtih maranadate richyate is taken from sankhya yoga second chapter 34th verse the thing is if you read 10 shlokas before 34 34 10 shlokas after 34 you will come to know the situation in which krishna is giving out this um verse and as i have told you all krishna is telling is do your work don't let go of your dharma and don't worry about the results the same thing so in you know telling this exact thing he brings out so karmanya vadikaraste comes after this shloka and uh, before this is when he tells jatasya hidruva mrityu so he's just connecting the dots is telling death is certain so if you don't kill him also somehow you know pakavaravas will die even pandavas have to die all you are doing is you are trying to kill them by trying to bring in justice so he's connecting the dots starting from there telling that you do your work i'll give you the fruits that you have to bear so in between these two this beautiful shloka comes and the complete shloka goes like this akirtim cha api bhutani kathayan kathayishyanti te vyayam संभावित चाकीर्ति so he's telling that if you now decide to let go of your swadharma so swadharme nidhanam shreya he is you know in one of the you know corresponding uh, uh, chapter silta in actually the third chapter karma yoga he mentions shreyan swadharmo vigunah paradharma swanushthitat swadharme nidhanam shreya paradharmo bhayavah so even, you should always do your dharma whether you bear the good fruits or the bad fruits swadharme nidhanam shreya so it is better to die rather than not to do your swadharma so in order to bring in this point his previously in sankhya yoga he is telling that a person akirtim uh, chapi bhutani so if you decide to now run away from your you know um, your duty of you know, you know fighting this war akirti so you'll get infame and what happens is even after you die so let us say you have decided that this battle is wrong and you run away though your intention may be different this will bring in fame to your entire not just you but to your entire dynasty kuruvamsha and avyaya so for a long time for eternity people will continue to talk about your in fame they won't talk about arjuna who you know you know broke the um, the thanus and you know he cleared the dropadi swayamvara they won't think about that they may not think about the great feats you have done they'll only think about this bad one wrong thing that you did running away from your duties people will talk about this in fame akirtim chapi bhutani kathayishyanti avyayam they will for long time they will start you know talking about your infame so what he is telling is sambhavitasya cha akirtihi maranat atirichyate sambhavitasya cha akirtihi so for sambhavita is a person who is dignified so in society he has a very good respect so a respectable person is called sambhavita so sambhavitasya cha akirtihi for that particular respectable man akirti infame maranat atirichyate is even more dangerous than death itself so for a well respected person akirti or infame is even more harmful or even more detrimental than death itself maranat atirichyate is even more bad 
than death itself. So this beautiful shloka is the 34th shloka of Sankhya Yoga, the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Akirtim chapi bhutani kathaishyanti tevyayam sambhavitasya chakirtihi maranat atirishyate. So just the meaning of the lokokti, sambhavitasya chakirti maranat atirishyate is for a respectable, for a respected person, infame is even more detrimental or devastating than death itself. Vobba gauravan vitanige akirtiyu maranakkinta hechu no one noon to Madhutade or Nashavan noon to Madhutade. That is the meaning of this particular um, shloka that is Sambhavita Sechaki Tihi Maranat Atir Chete. So again, I would suggest you to go through uh, Bhagavad Gita. If you're writing exams, surely you will be going through these you know, shlokas. Beautiful shlokas are available. And um, reading the entire Bhagavad Gita, as one of you already mentioned, it will give you all the you know knowledge or all the suggestions or all the opinions of Krishna in order to deal with the daily life you know, problems or daily life situations that you come across, Krishna has already told in Dvapar Yuga what has to be done. Only thing is, the uh, advantage actually, though it's not an advantage, but advantage we people in Kali Yuga have is, so probably if you know a person in Treta Yuga or Dvapar Yuga had to you know, get understand this, he had to do a penance for a long time, he had to you know, do a lot of harsh penances. But in Kali Yuga, it is told that you know, in various, you know, granthas, in various shlokas, it is told. In Kali Yuga, the advantage is, even if you are able to dedicate time for chanting some mantra 10 times, it is as beneficial as a person in Dwapara Yuga doing tapas for hundreds of years. So, the Kala is so bad that if you are able to dedicate time for 10 times of chanting mantra, that itself is great in Kali Yuga is what people tell. Of course, if you are able to do it in an even more better way, it's always good. So, Bhagavad Gita is I know it's a very small granta. 700 shlokas is all Bhagavad Gita has. So if you can, you know, learn, if not learn, at least read 700 shlokas in probably two years. Even if you understand it, even if you don't understand. Again, there are so many people who tell, even if you don't understand Bhagavad Gita, it is fine. You have to just read. Just keep reading the same Bhagavad Gita again and again, and it will have very good effects. That is what is told. So 700 shlokas is probably not uh, a very big thing. So please um, read Bhagavad Gita whenever possible. And uh, with that, if you don't have any other doubts, we can conclude today's meeting. So if you have any doubts, we can discuss that. Guru Reva Gatihi Guru Meva Bhaje Guru Naiva Sahasmi Namo Gurave Na Guru Paramam Shishurasmi Guru Matirasti Guru Mamapahi Guru Ram Ram Ram.